Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Countdown to ISM 2017. This is Ken Gall for Source One Management Services. Today, I'm joined by Kate Vitasek, faculty, graduate, in executive education at the University of Tennessee, and also the lead researcher for the Vested Sourcing Business Model. This year, at ISM 2017, Kate is delivering one of the conference's fabled signature sessions as part of the conference's outside track, which our previous guests, Rose Kelly Falls and Nassim Malik, spoke about. Kate's session is called Unleashing the Magic of Transformational Supplier Relationships. Kate, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much, Ken, for having me. As someone who's very well-versed in industry events and conferences, what makes you excited about the ISM conference specifically, given all the other things that go on throughout the year? You know, it is just such a great venue for sourcing and procurement professionals to come together. You know, the wealth of sessions that you have, not just the regular smaller sessions, but the signature sessions. I know people get hyped up to come to those because y'all bring in great speakers. Uh, you know, I've always enjoyed those signature sessions or, you know, you want to make sure you pre-register for those. They're, they're just really great. Um, and then networking. I mean, come on, where else can you come and get that many people in the procurement profession all coming to the same place, you know, spending on one city um, for a couple of days of great networking and, um, and sessions and learning? Yeah, I'd agree with that for sure. And it's something that Rose, Nassim, and Jamie Bliss that we've had on the podcast this year have talked about is the importance of not being shy. I mean, you've flown to Florida, you're there for a reason. And while ostensibly everything is set up in an educational format and there's speakers who are kind of giving lectures and there's panels and people you can hear from, it's not meant to be a one-way conversation at all. Um, everyone should be talking to everybody. No one's off limits. And where else are you going to have the occasion to be in the same room with those people because you all got your jobs, you all have the different states you live in, you know, you're living your life. So if you're going to spend the few days at the conference, you should be talking to people. So can you give us a quick synopsis of your panel? I love this idea of transformational relationships as a concept. So tell me more about the panel you're going to be running. Well, it's um, kind of a two-part section. So I'm going to give the theory. So I'll be giving a um, kind of a, a lecture. You know, it sounds kind of boring, but Hopefully, for those who come, trust me, I'm not boring. Um, I'll, I'll make it inspiring. But I'm going to talk about our research on the, the vested sourcing business model. And people will say, well, what is vested? You know, well, think about the word vested. Um, the buyer and the supplier have a vested interest in each other's success. And it truly is a win-win. You know, we say win-win, but we look at our contracts and we look at how we buy and sell. And we, we often fall short. So I'm going to talk about our research. And what is vested? What are these five rules uh, that I write about in the book, Vested Outsourcing, Five Rules That Will Transform Outsourcing? And then we brought together the practice part. So it kind of goes from theory to practice. And I'm going to be joined by TD Bank and um, one of their suppliers, uh, CDRE, who will be talking about their journey to a vested relationship and how they really, you know, why they decided to shift to a vested sourcing business model, how they did it, and some of the results that they've had. They are about two years into their vested relationship. So it's fresh, you know, why they wanted to move, and it's fresh with the results that they've had just after two years. Yeah. So you, you mentioned um, going from theory to practice, and certainly the, the, the bent of the conference is educational. But it only matters how much you can apply what you've learned. I think one of the worst feelings you can have as a professional is having gone to a conference and feeling energized about the kind of things you learned. And then to get back to your day job and think, ah, I, I was excited then, but I don't see how I can apply it. And then you get sort of drawn back into the, the business as usual kind of mindset. So you incorporating this idea of theory and practice as a definite part of your session, I think, is, is great. And in reading a little bit about your session and the business model, you talk about making the change from talking to executing. So I find that point really interesting. Do you think that as a profession, procurement, supply management, and sourcing is plagued by a lot of talk instead of a lot of action? You know, I do, actually. One of the case studies that we have from a company that is pilot invested in health, and their case study starts out and it said, you know, they've been talking and talking and talking. They talk win-win. They talk about transformation. They talk about innovation. 
but why don't they get there? That's where our research really comes into play is, you know, I'm so fortunate. I tell people I have the coolest job on the planet. Who else gets to, you know, sit around and, and study, you know, how people buy and sell and yeah. why certain relationships are so successful and why they aren't. Because, you know, can, don't they all start out wanting to be successful? Right. And what happens? Right? And it's that not the lack of intent, but the lack of execution. And I think a lot of our procurement processes today are geared towards buying. And, you know, we buy a commodity. We want to be efficient. We, we learn to automate the procurement process. We learn how to negotiate and get the best deal. But getting the best deal for you isn't necessarily a win-win for your partner. And when we buy, we are using tactics that aren't partnering tactics. And, and that's where we find these strategic deals go wrong. Right? It's not the lack of intent. It's the lack of how they approach the procurement process, the contract itself. Okay, so you have a strategic partner and you have a 30-day term of convenience. How strategic could they be if you're going to fire them in 30 days? <laughs> right? Think about it. And so we, we find ourselves falling short. And I don't think it is from a lack of intent, especially on the strategic partnership. You know, people are saying strategic innovation, and we're just not buying that. We're not contracting for that. We're not using procurement processes that are enabling us to truly create those relationships. And that's why I'm so excited about our research and being able to share it at a signature session with the ISM folks. You know, I think that one of the biggest barriers we have, the most salient examples of how any professional or even even people in general can can stand in their own way is – Having ideas are great, and the intent is certainly there to be strategic, to have win-win relationships. But the hardest thing I think we have to overcome is behaviors, and leaders struggle not to motivate their people to understand the message, but to buy into it and to carry that through in everything that they do. And I think it's a really worthwhile angle to take for the procurement profession where we can tend to focus on strategy or, you know, the, the cliche of best practices. But best practices are about changing behaviors. They're not about convincing people to do something. I think it's convincing them to enact it, not to buy into the idea, but to actually be able to live it. And uh, I'm really interested to see uh, the research you present this year and, and then again how it's going to evolve going forward. You know, we're at this turning point. I know that folks like Kelly Barner has talked about um, – procurement being at a crossroads. And it's hard to contextualize overall with the evolution of procurement as a function and the way that technology is growing at an exponentially quick rate. But just strictly from procurement going from someone who buys stuff or tactical reactive purchasing to this idea of strategic sourcing to business partners to change managers, it is about bringing your behaviors up to speed with the theory and the practice. And um, ISM is a great forum to be able to, to talk about all that. Like I said, it's not a lack of intent. We've been saying strategic sourcing for a long time. We just don't do it, right? And, and the thing is, I, it's that, you know, we, we are taught certain ways, and that's the process that we get in is what we're taught. And, and as an educator, it's really fun to get to come and meet with practitioners and challenge them to rethink and look at new ideas that are being taught now. You know, if you haven't come back to an executive education course or taken any of the, the courses that are out there, you know, you're behind in what we're teaching. Mm. And not just at the University of Tennessee, but I think, you know, all of the, you know, places out there that drive to teach new ways of doing things. We're always taught best practices. We actually teach you don't want best practice. You want best fit. Mm. So think about this. I'll just I'll just posit you with this idea. So SRM, right? Supplier relationship management, buzzword, everybody's doing it, right? Yep. But if you have a basic supplier, why do you want supplier relationship management? There's no relationship. You're just pushing a button and getting your pen or your paper clips, right? Um, and if you're on a, a highly, highly strategic deal, you don't want supplier relationship management. You want insight-based governance to manage the business with your supplier, strategic relationship management. So you take one simple concept like SRM, and you're on a continuum. And all too often what we were taught was best practice, right? 
one size fits all. Mm -hmm. We're taught SLAs and metrics and how you want to measure everything. Well, that's not necessarily the case. The way you would measure a business outcome is very different the way than the way you would measure an output or a performance-based deal. It's very different than how you would measure a more transactional type deal. So just the concept of metrics. Yeah. You know, what's the best fit, not the best practice? And we have to sharpen our skills to realize that there's multiple best practices that need to fit to the best solution that you have. It's really interesting, the concept of this continuum. I think that we will default to the idea of a best practice or, or a reference point as a sort of crutch that it's it's challenging to think outside the box, not to use that cliche again, but it, it's a challenge to come up with a different way of doing things, to, to not be beholden to a reference point and just say, okay, my five-step process is thus, and as long as I follow the five steps, I've done my job. But it's about understanding where you fall in the continuum, what is best fit for you, and not necessarily saying just because the model says that it's five steps, I need to follow those five steps to the letter of the law. you got to look at the investment that you're making with your suppliers, that they're making with you, and how you are really going to create a win-win relationship. And all the education and theory in the world isn't going to give you that answer straight away. You have to understand the specifics of the relationship, your requirements, their requirements. And I think where it comes down to is, again, remembering that it's people, right? Yes, it's a supplier who serves your business, but the person on the other end of the table is a person, <laughs> and you need to relate to them in the way that makes sense for their needs, your needs, and so forth. So um, what piece of advice would you give to procurement professionals going into the conference this year? You know, as one of my pet peeves when I go to a conference is you go up and got the little tables and people sit at the table, you know, at the networking event, and they're, they're with people from their own company. Yeah. Like they're with people that they know. And I always try to go up and meet people I don't know because that's going to help me learn. If I can meet a few people that I don't know, I walk away a better person. I, I walk away learning something I didn't. Now, it's great to network with people you don't see all the time. I, I come to these events, and there's some people, that's the only time I get to see them is once a year, you know, at, at a big conference like this. Um, but make a point to go up and talk to people you don't know. And, you know, a lot of times I think that the buy side, you know, they see a supplier come up. And they're like, oh, no, I can't supplier. I'm going to oh, no, hide my business card, my name tag. You know, and it doesn't matter if it's a buyer or supplier. Just get to know what someone else is doing. I mean, I think of it as karmic benchmarking, right? So well, if you took one little piece of snippet, even if it's from the suppliers out there that you may meet, you may, you may see something that they're doing that you didn't know about. Um, and, you know, do some karmic benchmarking. Get some good karma. Share something with somebody and take away something from something you don't know. And your bank deposit will be better because you're a better person, right? And, and don't just sit with the people that you know, especially the people from your own company. You can do that all day long. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, I think that is a really great note to, to end on and um, something for me to personally think about, too, going to this conference. We all need to bear that in mind, and I'm sure you'll be you'll be doing the same. So uh, I certainly hope that all our listeners signed up for your session while they were able to when they registered for the conference. I'm, I'm, I imagine it's full up by now, but it's definitely going to be one of the highlights of the agenda this year. Kate, thanks so much for your time and look forward to seeing you in Florida. Awesome. Thanks a lot.